the lead after 52 minutes following a mistake by Viv Anderson. He's robbed there by Everson, who crosses for Mats Nordgren to score with a fierce shot. But Anderson made amends when he started the move, which led to Forrest's equaliser 10 minutes from the end. He finds Gary Mills, whose cross is converted by Tony Woodcock. Woodcock, Anderson and Bertels were all booked, but Forrest is still unbeaten in the European Cup. Woodcock. Robertson. There's Lloyd. And it must be in. Yes! Tony Woodcock. Now McGovern. Mills for Forrest. McGovern making the break. And what a perfect ball that was. And there's Burkles. And no mistake from Gary Burkles. Forest 2, Arjesh Pitesh nil. Final 1 2 with Lloyd, but uh, the big lad wasn't agile enough to get on the end of it. Belka. And a chase here as Teletsky comes racing in against Gunn. That looks useful. Riediger. There's a the goal. That is disaster. Total disaster. Peter Shilton hasn't dirtied his shorts all night for 90 minutes, yeah. right? He hasn't picked the ball up, he's kicked it a couple of times, he's never had a shot to save, and they gave a classic away performance in a European Cup competition, or in any competition. All credit to them, they did it very honestly, and we failed to break down their barrier. That was our problem. And it, the, despite the fact it could have been 2-0, we could have scored 3 or 4 also. If somebody had wanted to go badly enough, then we might have had a better result. I think, Gary, over there, we will want a goal badly enough. The Frederick Ludwig Jan Sport Park in East Berlin, full tonight with 30,000 spectators. But the East Germans claim that such is the interest here in this second leg that they could have sold up to 150,000 tickets. It's an atmosphere of crackling uncertainty, with Forrest being asked to do more even than they did in Cologne in last season's memorable semi-final, when they had to win that night and did so 1-0. And they know that tonight a 1-0 win would merely force this quarter-final into extra time. Jimmy Gordon and uh, Peter Taylor there on the Forest bench, and Brian Clough just in between them. Taken by Lloyd. David Needham with the flick on Francis. Has he got it in? He has. Well, well, well. The goal that Forrest needed, wanted and were desperate for. And Francis, the man around whom there's been so much discussion, puts the ball in the net from Needham's flick on. And Forrest are level on aggregate and this tie has opened up again. Nottingham Forest back now, full of hope back in the land of credibility in this European Cup tie and look at the free kick taken by Larry Lloyd watch for David Needham's flick on and now watch Francis coming in there he is that's the man who scored the winning goal in the final last season and he has restored Forest European Cup dreams again tonight it's now 1-1 and we're back exactly where we started before the first leg all square and the goal coming after 17 minutes here in East Berlin Strasser, Telka, that was Needham, this is O'Neill, Chalecki, McGovern, Bertels turning, that'll give Forrest so much heart now, drive by Bertels, you can see the confidence soaring now in the Forrest side, just what they required with the goal when it came when it did and Bertels almost got another one there it didn't miss the post by much did it Teletsky plays it short driven by Brillat and Chilton got down superbly the linesman may actually have seen an offside there I don't quite know whether there was a player ahead of the defence it looked to me as though there was a player offside but Chilton's save was magnificent and necessary it was uh, Brillat who came in with the foot rather high on Bertels free kick to Forrest 
quickly taken. Anderson. Needham. Aimed at Francis, number 10. Takes on Tropar. And beats him. And Bertels is in the middle. Oh, that was a fine move by Forrest. And could so easily have brought their second from Gary Bertels. Watch Francis here. This is where he played in the European Cup final on the right. Gets his cross in. Bertels the flick header. Rudvalite the save. Riediger came in, that's the man who scored in the first leg, and he wasn't far away with that header either. Forrest moving nicely when they're in possession, they've settled down well, here's Francis. But there's still a long way to go, that was no act to Riediger. Oh, he's gone past Larry Lloyd very smoothly, next is the player in the centre waiting for the ball to be played in, it made it to play behind him, it is to Teletsky, Teletsky shot! That was a sweeping move by Dynamo Berlin. Bertels. John McGovern. O'Neill. This is the close football that Forrest can be very good at on the edge of the penalty area. Still O'Neill. Francis turning. Oh, he's got another one. No, it hits the bar, and it's play on, is it? Or has the referee given the goal? The Germans think it's a case of playing on. The referee has gone back to the centre, and Francis is arms raised, and the goal, will it be given? He's looking at his linesman, and a goal has been given, it would appear. The Germans try to play on, but I'm sure the ball was in the roof of the net, and Francis gets another one. And Forrest are now in front. 37 minutes gone, and a tremendous piece of finishing there. Just watch this. The ball played in low, Francis turns, he shoots from the narrowest of angles, it's over the goalkeeper, it crashes against the underside, but it's over the line. May have looked a bit like the 1966 World Cup final, but believe me, that one also counts. And Forrest are leading by two goals to nil on the night, and have gone ahead on aggregate for the first time in the tie. Two goals scored by the million pound man, Trevor Francis. After so much comment about him from Brian Clough and Peter Taylor after Saturday. Pulling players back now and defended what they've now got to do. Here's Riediger. He's going to try and play it in and McGovern broke up the move and broke for Forrest who may well get even more space now because the Germans have got to push people forward. And here's Frank Gray for Forrest looking for Bertels on the far side. Running slightly into trouble but can he find Robertson? Francis is over on the far post. Oh, penalty, is it? It's a penalty. Is it? Yes, the Forest. The trip on John Robertson and Forrest have a penalty. Five minutes before half time. And the interesting thing now is that Trevor Francis has walked forward to have a quick discussion but Robertson is the penalty taker and I'm sure he'll take it he missed his last one in a European match in Barcelona in the Super Cup but he scored unerringly twice past Ray Clements in the League Cup semi-final and now he could surely put this European tie almost without question beyond doubt John Robertson and he seems to have done so it's 3-0 and Forrest here have almost gone into dreamland. Who would have thought that in the first half they would be three goals up? Two for Francis, who's got his arms around the scorer of the third, Robertson, himself brought down and himself the penalty taker. Just see here as he takes it with the right foot, Rudvalite goes to his left and he goes entirely the wrong way. Lovely kick by Robertson and Forrest lead 3-0 on the night and that means now that Dynamo Berlin have to score three to beat them. Pelkar jumps nowhere near the ball. Strasser miscues his shot. Oh, and that's a foul by Roberts. It's a penalty. No act was fouled by John Robertson. And a penalty has been given. The right back in the attack was brought down. A reverse situation to the first half. And John Robertson, who won that first half penalty, now gives one away. So, a chance for Dynamo Berlin to get back into the match. Five minutes into the second half. Chalecki is the dead ball expert, the captain of number seven. He will take the kick against Shilton. And scores! 
and the stadium comes to life and it's remarkable that all but one of the goals scored against Nottingham Forest in away legs in the European Cup have been scored from the penalty spot and it was from there that Shilton was beaten here by Teletsky, the Dynamo captain who really drove it Shilton guessed right and actually was terribly unlucky look at that, he wasn't far away, the goalkeeper marvellous attempt to stop it, but he couldn't Shilton crowded out there, but oh, it's still loose and is it in the net? No, it isn't. The goalkeeper seems to have fallen on the ball right on the line. The Germans are appealing it was over the line in the first place. Now, what's the referee going to do? It was a real scramble. Forrester just sort of trying to sort it all out. I think he must give Shilton a free kick for what happened on the line. He was battered and they're appealing it went over the line there. You can see the German with his arms up, very hopeful. But in fact, Peter Shilton emerged from that scuffle with a free kick and no doubt a very relieved mind. Teletsky takes. Noak gets a touch on it. Net! Oh, he's missed it. Well, the German players flopped to their knees then. They saw their last chance go of staging a dramatic recovery because number 11, Wolf Rudiger Netz, had a clear shooting chance here. On the volley, that's true, but he had a sight of Shilton's goal and he put the ball inches past Forrest's far post and Netz will regret that miss. And the referee has blown and Nottingham Forest are there in the semi-final. A performance which, bearing in mind how things stood before tonight, was against the odds. They were a goal down. But three first-half goals did the trick for Forest. There are 11 different names on that trophy and it could be argued that in this, the 25th season of competition, Nottingham Forest have rewritten the book on how to succeed in Europe. So what can we expect from them tonight against the side trying to live up to their past? Nottingham Forest, the team which produces magnificent performances away to follow sometimes rather less than convincing performances here at home. First corner for the home side, English champions greeted with great applause. English champions in terms of the European Cup. I hasten to end for those of you listening from Merza's side. Here's Robertson. Oh! Well, certainly worth a try. There was a lot of were a lot of players between uh, Robertson and the goalkeeper. Interesting physiques, Tahamata and Jensen. Five in the box for Forrest. Lloyd was again covered by Lerbu. He's marked him every time in the air from the set pieces, the number six. Good crawl, organising the cover. Lerbu lost at that time, and it's turned in by Francis. It was lost in the crowd on the near post, and Trevor Francis once again is the man on the spot for Nottingham Forest. Well, maybe they were looking for Lloyd again, I don't know. But Robertson's corner, look how the number six, Lerber loses it as Lloyd goes up. There are two players on the near post, it comes back off the post, and Francis doesn't miss those. Gertles. Anderson. Beautifully away from Lerbu. Burns couldn't make anything of it. Here's Robertson. Burns again. Bottles, bowls. Nicely slipped through. Bottles. The government is up on this attack. Somewhat more behind the flare than his colleagues had a right to expect. Left back by Francis, it's still in play, and an appeal for handball and a penalty. Penalty for handball by Swamble. And once again, the ingenuity of Trevor Francis, the move coming right on the eye, flicked it away from the goalkeeper who committed himself. 
Now look at Swanborn. Definitely used his hand to help try and control the ball. And so John Robertson, who scored 13 times from the spot this season, scored in Berlin, has the chance to give Nottingham Forest a 2-0 lead over Ajax of Amsterdam. And he does so easily. What a fortuitous goal, which produces the ticker tape. Fortuitous in terms of the ease of the penalty, which was put away with Pete Shriver's going to the other side. Pressure's beginning to tell on Ajax, there's no doubt about that. Francis could save! Shilton's lined them up. Bonsink. Oh! Terrific piece of keeping there by Peter Shilton. Now Gray with a chance to cross it in. Ajax weren't really ready for it. And they were the header by Francis that looked as though it had to go in. Now Kroll's up there. Arneson's in there. Lerby also. But Kroll might well try a little swinger. Lerby might try to hammer one, which he does, and shot him down superbly. And now the pressure is really on Forrest. Whacking another corner in there, and it's into the net! 